For many years now, Russ and Craig have had many wide-ranging conversations with folks from all over the gaming world. This is one of those conversations. D6G, the last chapter. Welcome back to Dunkin' Donuts here with Craig, myself, and Colby from Plat Hat Games. How are you doing, Colby? I'm good. I'm, good. I'm just enjoying this delicious uh, mulatte. Mulatte. Nice Latte. choice. Nice I, choice. Is there such a thing as a mulatte? Yeah, there's, it's someplace. I'm hoping it's Dunkin' Donuts. If, there, if, if it isn't, it should be. That's a fantastic hey, beverage name. I, well, I mean, the guy behind the counter is looking at us funny. Did you smuggle that in? <laughs> Wait, it's got a yeah, Starbucks logo it on it. Might, it <laughs> might have come from Dairy Queen. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Oh, there's one well, across just, the street. Just, yeah, just, yeah sit, just sit with your back look, to him and he'll be fine. If we buy a donut, if we buy a donut, he'll go away. What, what do you like for he'll donuts, Colby? Fine. What's your favorite uh, donut? I'll have, I'll just have a chocolate. That's. I uh, didn't go with so crawler. I'm glad because everybody keeps picking crawler. Yeah, which is, the last which is few people have picked crawler. Chocolate's so. chocolate's a good call. Chocolate. Now, what like the chocolate cake donut itself, or chocolate frosted, or like you know? Could we smuggle in some Krispy Kreme, maybe? <laughs> look at this. Wow. Out. Ouch. We're Out. Gonna, we're gonna be, we we're are gonna be... done with you. <laughs> you are dead to us. Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme. What are you, not from New England? Come on now. All right. All right. I do go to Dunkin' Donut every time I'm in New England. Oh, good. Phew. I like Because yeah, yeah, there are no Krispy Kremes because we've driven them out. We did. We, we, we just, we, we, I think New England is responsible for Krispy Kreme's financial issues. I think we may We'd have been like, singing. We like Krispy Kreme in Ohio. <laughs> They're actually pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, They're pretty they were good. great when I went when yeah. I was going to school in Florida. Yeah. I had Krispy Kreme all the time. Not going to lie. Well, uh, I was excited when Dunkin' Donuts started showing up towards the end of my time there. So, but we're not here to talk about donuts today. I don't well, think. We are, but we can talk about other things also. Uh, our listeners have been asking. We get this email at least once a month, if not more frequently. Um, <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm sounds think- <laughs> Sounds like a ringing endorsement. <laughs> it's about some crackpot. Uh, the same guy. Some asks, dude. Me, asks, asks us one question. <laughs> no. Today, we will spend 45 minutes All answering right. that one guy. I'll just say hundreds. We got hundreds of emails. We get, thousands even thousands. Get, like, get, just just the other day, to us by the score <laughs> right. Stork loads of emails asking us. There, people are considering starting their own podcast. And what do you do to start a podcast? Or if you're not considering starting a podcast, you might find this interesting just to hear what goes on behind the scenes, right? Just you know, whatever. Just go ahead. Just go ahead and. and... <laughs> Turn off the podcast now. Right. This is, this or if you're not <laughs> thinking about starting a podcast, maybe at the end of this, you will. Right. Even better. Yeah. Just go ahead and listen in. We've got lots of witty jokes for you. Right. You'll yeah. enjoy it either way. Thank you. We have chiefs. We have pages and pages of prepared material. So. <laughs> wow. All right. It's three bullet points. <laughs> Let's there, go ahead and set them up. There is. That's right. <laughs> All <laughs> right. So I guess the first thing is, um, people, I, I guess the first thing is if you're going to do a podcast, maybe why do you do a podcast? So Colby, I know you, you guys do the Plat Hat podcast. Is that, why did you guys start that podcast? Was it purely to promote your products or were there other reasons driving you too? Well, it's, it's a way for us to get together routinely for one and just, uh, have time where we're talking about what's going on with games, you know? Mm-hmm. And then that keeps us aware and that keeps us thinking about, uh, the games industry as a whole, because that's kind of the, the focus of our podcast. Uh, but it, but it also gives us a chance to pull back the curtain and show people we're we're real people that are doing this. This isn't just a faceless company that's putting these games out. And and hopefully that's a point of connection for them. It makes them feel like when they're at the convention, they can come up and talk to us. And mm-hmm. um and and we like that. We like the idea of building a community. Um, as well as games. Um, and and you know, I come from the, the background of having started heroskippers.com, so I've got some experience and, and get a lot of enjoyment out of that community-building aspect. Yeah. I think, Craig, why do, why do you like to do podcasting? Uh, well, let's see. Um, I don't know. <laughs> why, why did we? I, I don't know. I mean, you basically convinced me that we should do it just because it would be funny. <laughs> And that was four years ago. <laughs> It'll be a laugh. It'll be and, fun. And, come on, we'll have fun. We'll how, hang out. How and hard that, could it be? Literally, I I actually think about that a lot lately. <laughs> I've been thinking about that a lot as I realize, like, as I start you know, look at the download numbers, and I start kind of choking on how many people listen to us, and 
it's really kind of hard for me to fathom at this point that there's that many people who care at all what I think <laughs> or what we have to say. And it and it really has been like you just kind of put your head down and you do the work and you're having fun doing the work so you don't think about it and then the next thing you know you raise your you know you raise your head up you look around and you've hit another milestone you know what i mean and yeah. it's uh it's really been kind of a a crazy trip and it all started with yeah just like i uh, you know like i i like talking and uh russ likes making bullet points so, <laughs> so oh, there, there you go, go. <laughs> and rafe liked all kinds of different things and uh it was yeah it was a uh, some sort of strange three-way marriage made in someplace closer to heaven than we are here but nowhere near heaven so i once heard i once heard a podcast or that i listened to say that um you know don't don't worry about the numbers (laughs) don't do it for your audience do it because you want to do it and do what you want to do and and the audience will be there or it won't but it's not worth doing if you're not having fun doing it yeah no which is 100 percent. i mean you can't that you're 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 if you don't enjoy doing it, which me and I think the key is you're you in, you need to enjoy imparting information and giving information and talking about the things that you enjoy. So you have to choose something to podcast about that you that you enjoy mm-hmm. immensely already, and then you have to have a personality that enjoys, you know, sort of giving out information, talking about things, sort of analyzing things, looking at things, and finding different ways to uh, to 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 look at something, different perspectives. That can pull different pieces of information out of it, um, because if if you're n- if you're not outgoing enough, like you don't want to talk to people, then this is the wrong thing for you. Right. If there's nothing particular that you care about, then this is the wrong thing for you. And you definitely can't do it for the numbers, because no matter who you are, when you start, you're going to be doing it for you know five, ten, fifteen, twenty of your friends, <laughs> right. and 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 that's about you know, and that's and God knows how long it's going to be before you know whatever happens happens and other people start listening to you but um if you're not having fun doing then those numbers are nothing they're nothing they're literally i mean russ could be lying to me he could be making these things <laughs> up and sending them to me i don't know i am and it's so, just gonna keep yeah, going i just make them up exactly there's i know there's like 40 of you i know <laughs> and um no i, I mean there except when you go to events and you occasionally meet somebody who you know says very flattering things and it's neat to need to meet you like the listening audience is is an abstraction that can't be your you know the be all and the end all of of your motivation i guess is yeah. what i would say i i agree with you i think i think um you know my 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 getting into this is sort of similar to colby's right cuz you know you started the the website the popular website about heroescape i started a very popular website about 40k dakadaka.com and and when that community building experience also got me really jazzed up. It got me really excited about sharing information and and, and if you've got something you're really really passionate about, uh, and you want and you enjoy sharing that with other people, um, then something like a podcast might be a great medium for you. If you also enjoy talking and you and you think you're reasonably articulate, right? I mean, if you can cover those bases, then I think you might really enjoy doing a podcast. Um, but you got to be passionate about something, and you have to have something you really want to talk about because. Um, part of the problem is the commitment involved, right? So there's a lot of effort that goes into podcasting. Colby, did you, did you, uh, when you started your podcast, did it end up being about as much work as you expected? Were there, was there more going on to it than you, than you thought maybe? I did a little podcasting for Hero Scapers, mm-hmm. a, a podcast we called Scape Talk. So I, I had some idea of the commitment involved, but it, you know, you spend, if you're going to do heavy editing, which I have to do because I don't, nail that articulate thing always <laughs> um so, so you can spend five or six hours just in editing right um and and yeah so that's a it's a big time commitment that fortunately i have shoved off on alex yeah uh, <laughs> nice and, see it's good to have somebody you can shove it off on that's that's always good <laughs> and so so he does it uh for a compensation but you're you're not necessarily going to be able to do that for compensation when you're just starting right. a podcast uh, I have the, the fortunate um, fact that I'm also doing a game company and can treat it like a marketing thing, mm-hmm, right? Even though we're doing it for fun, you know, it, it has that little side advantage. That's nice. Well, that's that's a nice that's a nice bonus. Um, well, and when and and the reason I think the commitment is really important is because I think also another p- important point is you have to eat your pot your fiber when you do a podcast because you got to stay regular. <laughs> Russ is puns. Yeah. So Russ is a punny you know, guy. Your your podcast has to come out regularly. I think yeah. one of the biggest challenges people run into is they they'll do one and then they'll wait four weeks and they'll do another. 
and then they'll do two, and then it'll be three months and they'll do another. And I think what happens is if people don't, even if they like your show, if they don't get used to a routine of when there's a new episode, they'll stop looking for it. Right. And and when they go to clean up their podcatcher because there's too many podcasts in there and they don't they see there hasn't been a new episode of your show for five months, they'll just remove you. And all of a right. sudden your listeners dropping, even though you might have a great podcast and have really good content. I think it's really important that you're just dropping an episode very regularly. People know when to expect uh, even if they don't listen to every episode of your show, they know when to look for a new one and see if it's a topic they're interested in. I think that's really, really important. And I know I listen to some podcasts over others that I might enjoy more simply because they, I know reliably when there'll be a new episode, new content I can grab before I go on that trip or or whatever. That's something we, ch- we struggle with here. I, I hate being even a day or two late. And I know sometimes it fluctuates just because we have, you know, this isn't our only job. But but um, it's really important to try to get those shows out pretty regularly. Have you guys, do you guys strive for that too, Colby? Yeah, and it's not just the, I think the regularity also gives you a chance that you're putting out a note that, hey, the new podcast is up, mm-hmm. and that gives a chance for somebody to jump on board, because mm-hmm. I know that we post about it over on our on our Summoner Wars forums, and we do it on our Facebook, and we do it on our um, on Board Game Geek on the Dice Tower Guild, because we're part of the Dice Tower Network, mm-hmm. and so every time you're releasing a show, that's a little bit of advertising, and especially it's like, uh what's the show about that that might be something that particularly interests me. So even though I'm not a fan of your podcast or, you know, I haven't listened to it, I come on and listen and, and decide, Oh, you know, I like these guys. I'll go ahead and hit subscribe. That's how we got Uh, you. We we reviewed your game and got you, got you to listen to once. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. (laughs) (laughs) Or, or the, uh, um, you know, I follow this guest that you're not having on your show. Right. And so it, the frequency also gives you more opportunity Mm -hmm. for people, for new people to listen and and potentially become regulars yep. and build that base. Definitely that's definitely right. I think that's and that's a good dovetail into um where or or how should you promote your show. Um and and you mentioned a bunch of great examples there. I think uh, first and foremost you have to be listed in iTunes. It's just not an option. Um I think even though there's lots of other devices to listen to audio on, we still I think 70% of all our downloads are iTunes downloads. Um yeah. So you really got to get your show on, which is not hard. It's, it's just you guys got to do it, make sure it happens. And then I think, you know, as Colby said, you need to have, you need to post your show's activity in various communities, whether it's Twitter or Facebook or Board Game Geek or Reddit. We use all of those. Um, or or your, a forum or a website that, that is core to some of your community, uh, like, you know, like... Um, like Daka Daka for us or, or whatever, or maybe Heroescapers for Colby. So you can kind of leverage the people who know who you are and kind of build that fan base as you go. But also, even if you're not a big fan of Facebook or you don't care about Twitter personally, putting it there will get listeners who do care about that. And and that helps your show grow organically because a lot of the social media, it's very, very easy for someone to retweet or reshare it to their friends. Oh, you know, maybe they're, they don't listen to every show, but oh, here's an episode about that new that new game I was trying to tell you about, Bob, Summoner Wars, and I've been trying to tell you how good it is. Listen to these guys tell you about it for an hour. And suddenly they're sharing a, a show that that person might have listened to with a friend. Very four hours. Easily. Four, four hours, <laughs> exactly. See, he is a listener. <laughs> yes, or four <laughs> hours longer. Uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's uh, some of the things. I mean, what, what networks do you guys use, Colby? Beyond the ones you mentioned, just pr- the primary ones. We do you also- Facebook. We have a Twitter, yeah. but it's just retweeting our Facebook posts. However, I don't uh-huh. know. I set that up at some point. <laughs> yeah, and um, and we do our forum where the Summoner Wars players mm-hmm. all are, and uh, and then the Dice Tower mm-hmm. network. Uh, uh, it, that's that's pretty much all the places where we spread the news about it. Yeah, and um, we could probably do better at that. I have to get Alex on that. <laughs> well, we should mention that the, using and leveraging a network. I think the the um, you know it's interesting. People have interesting ideas of what a podcast network is or isn't. <laughs> you see some. I've seen some interesting posts. Uh, poor Tom on uh, on things like. Well, is this podcast being a member of the Dice Tower Network? Does that mean Tom Bassel dictates everything on the show? You know, and and uh, the same thing when we were in the we're in the Pulp Gamer Network. Uh, we are in the Pulp he Gamer totally Network. Totally does, by the way. He does. He calls you up every day, uh, Colby. <laughs> I want you to talk more about. So, um, but I can see that happening. You know, people think that with Pulp Gamer or whatever network you're part of. You know, why why are you in the network? Do they dictate or tell you what's to be on the show? And it's really just a support system, right? It's it's a system where different small podcasts can get together and say, hey. Here's another show we like too. Check them out, right? Is that pretty much how the Dice Tower Network works? Right. Obviously, Tom and and Eric and whoever else is all involved uh, has said, "No, you're you're cool enough mm-hmm. to be in our network. We we like you enough to have you join, or you're enough um, 
like us or, or whatever the whatever the things that they feel are mm-hmm. core to them and they th- feel that you encompass enough of those and, and are doing a good enough show to bring you into the network. So that gives you credibility and it gives you uh, a whole uh, list of potential listeners. Like, um, you know, the Dice Tower has way more listeners than we do. So when we come on the Dice Tower network, everybody who listens to the Dice Tower, even if 1% of those give us a try, right. then we've gotten a chance with, with quite a few people. Sure. And it's a great way to um, to, to get your show pro- uh, promoted and, and out there as well. It's hard to, and it's hard cause, because, and if a network says no to you because you're just starting out, don't feel like if they don't like you. It's just that be aware that a lot of these networks get requests from a lot of little podcasts all the time. And they, have, they don't want it to be like 30,000 shows, so they have to kind of find shows that that has sort of vetted themselves and proved themselves along. But if you can get into a yeah, network. I think, I think a lot of networks, have you have to have a certain number of podcasts mm-hmm. and they have to see a certain regularity right. in order to go ahead and bring you on. Yeah, it's really just proving out that you're really dedicated to it and that you haven't just tried this for a lark and decided it's too much work after a month, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> sort, of the, sort of the idea. <clears throat> now, one thing, too, before we get into the, the technical fun stuff the, here. The nitty gritty. The nitty the gritty. How stuff. do you make it work? Yeah, for well, for us editor types and, and techno geeks, right, so, right, right. Um, here's an area you might enjoy, Craig. So, what uh, I think it's really important to to make your show unique, right? I mean, the when you're thinking about making a podcast, uh, yeah. Craig, you can talk about this a little bit. Like, uh, how important do you think it is that they they put some time into what the show should be about? Why well, don't I mean don't uh, that isn't that what it's going to that that's what's going to dictate whether you're having fun? It's going to dictate whether you have listeners and it's going to dictate whether you have a place in the ever growing marketplace of podcasts. I mean, like when we started, gaming podcasts were relatively rare. I mean, there was probably like a handful that were really well known, right? Mm-hmm. Um and and you had to bring something to the table whether it was personality or um or or connections to the, you know, you had to have something that you could offer that would make you interesting in that in that group and when when we started there weren't that many so you know three schlubby guys from new hampshire that really had nothing particular to uh, uh offer <laughs> were uh, clearly uh, i guess more um interesting than i think they would probably be nowadays i don't know <laughs> um but <clears throat> but yeah i mean you 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 need to keep it fresh though which is i mean the thing that that we are constantly struggling with because once you've done, you know, I mean, if you think about ev- everybody's got something to talk about, like they say, everybody's got one great novel in them. <laughs> everybody's got one great story. I would say, uh, let's be generous and say everybody's got 10 or 15 podcast episodes in them. You know, <laughs> whatever they choose to talk about, there's 15 or 20 pet peeves or 15 or 20, you know, of your favorite little things that you'd like to talk about for an hour or 45 minutes or four hours, you know, whatever the case may be. <laughs> And then after you after you exhaust that, you're really starting to you have to be creative. You have to spend some serious time looking for what you're going to cover, what you're going to look at, how you're going to look at it. Um, you know, and and once you do like oh I don't know 102, 103 episodes, it's going to start. You know, every now and then it's going to amongst all those. If you think about it, there's like all the you know there's two main segments in all those, and then there's all the extra stuff that we do and all the little segments that we do and then all the extra content that we put out. So just this one show, that's a lot of different things. And there were some misses. There were some, there were some dogs in that bunch. And, uh, you know, you're, you're just going to have to accept that, but, but better that you take the chance, you know, you have to take a chance to constantly make stuff. You know, you've got to, you've got to adapt to things as they happen to you. You've got to bring, what interests you into what you're talking about, but you've got to constantly bring energy and focus to what you're doing, or it's just going to be boring. And, and, uh, I mean, the en- that energy is huge. I mean, this is, you know, it's, uh, it's late at night. All of us have had full days at work and, um, and you, and you can't talk like that. You can't be like, Okay, so now we're going to talk about uh, uh, content in your podcast. It's really important. I mean, you know, so I mean, it, the content is, it, it, it is what you're going to be doing. It's the, uh, as, as a wise man once said, content is king. <laughs> 
So, Colby, how did you guys decide what you wanted the the, the uh, and part of that is is format of your show, right? So, every, a lot of shows are different in different formats. We obviously have kind of gotten into a routine of a very specific format for our show. Colby, how did you guys come up with your format and and the, what, what you're going to talk about for your show? I started just kind of goofing with a friend of mine who goes to a lot of the conventions with me, and I thought it would just be uh, fun. But a couple podcasts in, uh, and I decided. Hey, this isn't going to last forever. Uh, <laughs> what what are we doing here? What are we doing with this? Uh, and and I had to decide what is our unique voice. What mm-hmm. perspective can we bring to this that isn't already been being done on fifteen other podcasts? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and I decided that is that we are a game company, and so I think there would be people who would be interested in in hearing some takes from people who are doing that. And so we tried to put that spin on our topics and our conversations as much as possible. Well, that makes sense. That's great. And I think a lot of shows start out that way. They start out with uh, just sort of, you know, let's be like our friends sitting around and chatting, um, which is right. kind of our show. But at the same time, we had to put structure around it or otherwise it just becomes the same things everybody talks about every day at, at you know, right. Dunkin' Donuts, you know. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> So I saw um, what you did. Yeah, there. this guy at the table next to us <laughs> won't shut up about it. I know, right? It's that guy doing. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, um, and this is why everybody's really listening. The, the, all three of you who care about this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's talk about the technical aspects of podcasting. What it takes to actually get this to work. Um, Colby, are you familiar with what you guys are using for your uh, setup right now? Well, I familiar with what I'm using. I've got a <laughs> Shure microphone, and it's the studio mic, but that's mm. that's overkill, I think. Uh, and it's just running into uh, a uh, mixer that's a USB mixer. So mm. it's a full-on mixer, but it comes in through USB, and so I can mix on, on all, all the... I've got a couple of mics here, so I can mix all the people that are on my end, and then it mm. comes into the computer as one track. Um, the mixer's made by Yamaha. Mm-hmm. Cool. It's what is your MW12 is what it says the MW12 on it, so Yamaha. That helps anybody. Now now oh, I know that well just no, I have no idea. Um, what, what did you do you know what do you know what your setup runs for just at a ballpark just so you people know what you're running with? The mic is probably a 5 or 600 dollar mic, but that's I didn't get it for podcasting. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that is overkill. I mean, well, you know, not necessarily, but it's awesome. I think the I think the ones we got for for the other guys I actually don't even know what all the other guys are running on. Back there, when we were doing Scape Talk, I had gotten some mics for everybody. And mm. I think I might have spent $100 on each one. Yeah, that's so about They were yeah. good quality mics yeah. um, because I think that having a good sound quality helps keep people around. Um, mm. But this one I had gotten, um, my wife sings, and I had I had gotten it as part of a studio setup that I had built for her. Oh, nice. And so, it, and it just carried over into using it for the podcasting. And the mixer was, I think, like a hundred bucks. Uh, yeah. And but and then I use Sony Vegas to actually record, which is this great high end tool. But it's this video tool, and it's everything else. And, and I use that because I use it uh, for for my job, my day job. Um, and, and so I already have it around, and, and already knew how to use it. And so I use it for all the sound editing. Oh, very cool. That sounds that sounds like you have sort of unique crossover, uh, and, that, and I think a lot of podcasters have that. They they already have the equipment for other reasons. Um, I know Cody, Cody and John from Game On had that because they did a lot of recording for their church and already had the equipment. So if, that's always a bonus, right? If you've already got the good equipment for whatever reason, that definitely helps offset the cost. Um, now, some podcasts I know use, um, to make life easier for them, they use single self-contained recording devices, right? The little portable uh, MP3 recording devices. There's a bunch mm-hmm. of different ones out there. They range from the good ones. You don't want to get the ones that people use to record lectures. Those aren't really good enough. You, but but there's good ones with built-in condenser mics, and they go from probably between 150 to $300, depending on, on how fancy you want to get it. Now, the nice thing about that solution is you've got a built-in portable device. So if you do decide part of your shtick is your, your show is going to go to conventions and interview people or go on location and interview people, you've got the same device. You don't have to buy two of them. Um, everything's right in the device, so you can just then either plug it into the PC through a USB cable or pop out the memory card and pop it into the, the PC and transfer the files over. Um, you don't have to worry about plugging the mics in to something else. It's also very portable, so you can record in a conference room or some quiet room someplace. You don't have to worry about a complicated setup. The, downs- the downside to those devices is that if you have more than one person recording, 
it becomes a problem. You either put the device in the middle and you get a lot of room sound, just sort of, it sounds like an echo chamber sort of with everybody talking, or you got to pass the device around and it, you know, it just doesn't sound quite as clear as if everybody has fixed stationary mics, right? So most podcasters, I think, uh, eventually move to um, mics for everybody. And there's a couple options. There's this, how we started out originally was a simple, you can get a very simple mic and a computer. Uh, some people use headsets for gaming um, or the built-in microphone in your computer. That doesn't sound great. It works. doesn't sound great. We actually, I think we've talked about this before, we've started out with a rock band microphone, just plugged in the USB yeah. mic, plugged into the PC. I still have it. And Craig still has it, occasionally uses it once in a while, which is why, do you ever notice, sometimes sounds a little differently than the rest of the show. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, so that's an option. Um, but eventually we also graduated to condenser mics. Um, it just sounds a lot better. Um, you get, it sounds like the person's there more. Um, and it's one of the reasons I think people ask us, how come on your show, we know you're Skyping all the time, but everybody sounds pretty good as opposed to when I listen to other shows and someone's on Skype, they sound crackly. Well, usually it's because, um, well, one is internet connection, but, but more probably the person on the other end is either on a phone or, or on a very low quality mic. So right now, Colby sounds great because he's also on a really, as we just heard, a really awesome mic, even though he's on Skype. Um, but other, other third chair guests will sometimes sound a little worse because they're maybe on a phone as opposed to on a, on a good quality mic. So even if you're going to be with Skype, having good quality mics on both ends is, is huge. Um, yeah. And our setup here is very similar to what Colby described. Um, we've got condenser mics. Um, ours ranged about um, $80 per mic. Um, ML, MXL makes a great one for about that price. Um, you can go more. Uh, also, um, I've been told by voice people who know this kind of thing, I, I don't, that um, different mics work better for different people. So if you're really, really into it, you might want to try out a different mic with your voice and see if uh, cause some people lower ranges sound better on certain kind of condenser mics and you start want to spend a little more money on that if you really want to get crazy. But I think for the beginning, um, you know, a 60 to $100 condenser mic will, will be a great way to start. Um, and then you need the mixing board, as Colby described. Now, uh, it sounds like Colby's got, you said, about a $100 one. Ours is probably, the one I have here and the one Craig has is more in the 200 to $300 range. Um, the, probably the biggest difference in USB mixing boards is the number of uh, mic imports, inputs. Mm-hmm. Um, really, that's it. And whether or not you have the effect style that Craig loves to play with so much to make his little echo noises. I have <laughs> no idea. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so so um, that's what we use for that. Uh, the great thing about that is if you have multiple, if you do decide to get a mixing board, I would splurge for having more than one. Here's the cave. <laughs> more than one uh, mic in so that you can have more than one person I think on the board. Dunkin' Donuts has developed a leak. I think they might have. <laughs> so, now, Colby, you mentioned you, you, you had to draw my attention to it. It's your I fault. Did. I did. I, I accept full responsibility for that. Colby, you said what, what kind of recording software did you say you guys are using? I'm using Sony Vegas. Uh, there's also Audacity, which is free, and a lot of my guys are on that. Yeah. But it's not great. And um, and I think our editor is using GarageBand. I think that's what he actually mixes the show in now. Yeah, I think, and that's good. That's a great example. I've not heard of Vegas, but that sounds really cool. Um, I think most people who have Macs use GarageBand, which is awesome. I actually use Audacity. We've been using Audacity since the beginning because a, it's free. Um, right. It's not bad. I it does everything I need to do. Um, I'm sure there's well, some advanced. Have you editing. ever had the problem with it just like crashing on you and you have to go and retrieve? files uh, some of my guys have that happen to them uh, i uh. we have had that happen in the past a couple uh-huh. times um version the newest version is not too bad um yeah but there was there were some early We've days a yeah. couple horror stories yeah there yeah. It, is, yep. it is free and you get what you pay for so you know we should keep that in mind but for yeah, free it's not we bad should knock on wood that hasn't happened in a very long time it that is, was the yeah. first ever white uh, uh i mean uh, lone wolf interview it wasn't was it? it was a giant disaster yeah oh it was awful it's best not to remember those days uh, but yes, <laughs> yes best not to remember those hours but yeah we do use audacity but i've i've often toyed with the idea of getting a better uh, editing tool but i gotta think in the beginning if you're just trying to start out start with audacity um and then if or if you haven't have a mac you can go with garage band um i've also toyed with the idea of trying to work directly on the ipad with garage band because garage band on the ipad is like five bucks which is kind of nice but um I actually haven't gone that far because then you got the memory issues and these files take up huge amounts of space and so it's better on a PC. But um, so that's what we use. So that's pretty much our full setup. So basically, condenser mics, uh, USB. As Kobe mentioned, the USB board is huge. Then I say what the USB board is. People have asked me before too. How do you record on Skype? Um, I think the, the magic there is the USB board because the USB board can be configured to take 
all audio out from the computer, throw it back onto the board, and put it back in as a full mixed audio in. Right. So I can take the sound now coming from Colby and Craig through it through Skype, gets back into my mixing board, my voice gets mixed in there, any background audio I make on my iPhone, making achievement noises or whatever gets mixed in, and then comes back into the PC and recorded as one big stream. Yeah. Now the downside to that is I can't mix separately, so if Colby or Craig are coming in loud, there's not, there's not a separate track to fix that. I'm sure there are better tools that maybe do that better than Audacity does, but um, it works out pretty good for now. We usually, I should check levels at the beginning of the show and try to adjust it by adjusting my computer speakers and that kind of thing to get it all leveled out. Colby, do you guys do anything special to record Skype, or is that pretty much the same thing you do? We all connect on Skype, but we all have an instance of Audacity or whatever our recording software is, and we mm-hmm. all record our tracks separately and then line those up in our audio editor. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then you can, if there's noise going on in a track, uh, like a train's going by or whatever, then you have the ability to knock that track out. Right. Um, and, and if just somebody's track is making a lot of room noise because you had a guest on and they didn't tell you that they had the <laughs> air conditioner on, you can only have them on when they're actually talking. Right. And then you also don't risk the uh, compression of going through the internet that sometimes shows up right. when you're recording through Skype. So it's a really, uh, it's a really good alternative. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, but it is going to cost you a lot more time in post, right? If you do it that way, that's a that's a brilliant solution, and we've done that before too. Uh, when we have um, a guest capable of doing that, um, so yeah, it's great. You, the, the, the downside is everybody has to be at least technical enough to be able to record their tracks and and send them to you, right? And then yeah, so yeah, <laughs> if you have guests on frequently, you could run into that. We have right. a, we have a um, like a doc that we send for guests. There you and go. So far, it's worked. <laughs> that's awesome. But you could have the nightmare of then. You screwing it up and then you lost your whole podcast. Right. You don't have in your guest didn't record anything, right? So now you're out SOL. So maybe the best <laughs> solution is to both record everybody's track <laughs> and, and your own to do separate recordings. Right. Yeah, that would be that would be the best. Um but even again and that's and that and that works great. Uh, and we'll do that too. Like when I've been a guest on other podcasts, we'll do that for them also. If everybody involved is a podcaster, it's no problem at all. Um and that's a great way to do it. But again, it is a little bit extra post time as you got to line those tracks up and make sure they don't miss. Um, my, my, my little side story, my wife is a uh, co-host of a Star Wars The Old Republic podcast. And once in a while, we haven't figured this out yet, here's an Audacity problem. Audacity will clip like milliseconds here and there out of her track. And then when she sends it to, to her, the main host of the show to edit it all together, they're off sync. And she has to go through and find where they went and fix them all. So that's a... Oh. That's, <laughs> That's a brutal post production issue. Um, oh man! I know, right? So, so we're <laughs> I, I quit. <laughs> right. So <laughs> <I'm> done. <laughs> so we're 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 figuring that out now, and we're working through that. But those are the little those are the little gems of challenges you get with podcasting, you know. Um, uh, and as they say, the show must go on. You got to meet those right, uh, stay yeah. regular it's like things. Like anything in life, you can learn as you go. Right. Right. So I'm sure that that's pro- probably driving us to to try some other tools beyond Audacity as well to keep that. See if it is audacity or some kind of latency issue on our on our mic or whatever it is. Um, so um, now, when we edit shows, so let's talk a little bit about editing, Cole, because it sounds like you've done editing before and now you've managed to schluff it off on some other poor employee. Yeah, which is brilliant. Well, I wish I could do that. <laughs> um, I well, use Sony Vegas to edit. It's okay. and that's way overkill. You you probably won't use one percent of its <laughs> capabilities. Right. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, Audacity is the free option. Now, do you use anything and, else, or do you just pretty much use that one tool because it probably does everything under the sun, right? Uh, Sony does. Sony does yeah. everything that I need you to do. But mm-hmm. uh, Alex uses, I think, Levelator now, yep. and um, and I don't know what all he does to it mm-hmm. at this point. But I know that I, I have, I've heard people say that the levels are better than they were. I never heard a problem with them before. Yeah, but. I don't know. I guess they're better now. Well, so I use Levelator too, and I think Levelator is is magic. Um, the thing about Levelator, it, it is free, and um, just just Google Levelator, you'll find it. Um, it's a free app. And they do have a little donation jar. I would recommend tipping them if you if you use it more than more than a few times. Um, what Levelator does, which is really really nice, is it looks at all the audio on a given track, and it brings the levels in line for all the audio. And this is really really great when you do a lot of Skype calls or if you have guests who are on different mics or, or different sort audio sources. Because what happens invariably when you're talking to someone on the phone, or even now with Colby, I might be coming through louder right now when I'm recording. I can see the peaks on Audacity are higher for me, my peaks, than they would be for when Craig or Colby talks. 
What Love Alert does is it goes through and it looks at a baseline and decides, okay, well, this person's constantly choir, so I'm just going to jack the volume on him alone. And so when Love Alert is done, everybody's voice is at the same mean peak. It might bring me down some, it might raise Craig up some, raise Colby up some, but then if Colby shouted later, he'll put him down a little bit, and it all gets in line. Uh, and it does a great, great job of it. Um, so that's, that's, that's why I run all of our tracks separately through level later before I actually assemble them into one main show. And we record our show in, in segments. So the piece we record, when we do the main three, the three segment show, we might record on a Wednesday before we go live, um, two of the segments. And the week before that, we record one of the segments. So they're all recorded different days. The levels might've been slightly different those different days, whatever Skype was louder or softer, whatever it is. So level later brings all the things all in line and keeps the show at a relatively same volume. That avoids the whole thing where if you've ever been in this situation where you're listening to a podcast and all of a sudden someone starts talking, you feel the need to crank the volume up because you can barely hear him. And then someone else talks and you feel the need to turn the volume down because he's too loud. Yeah. Level elevator should remove that desire. Kind of like the thing you get on television when the commercials come on and they're way too loud for the rest of the show. It's that sort of feeling you're trying to avoid because it's very annoying to a listener. Um, so I really like Love Elevator. Love does a great job. One word of caution about Love Elevator, though, it does not handle music particularly well. So because it's trying to make everything sound exactly the same right. level, if there's music that has sort of intended cadences of high and low, it, it kind of levels them all out, which is bad. So what you want to do with, with music is lo- don't level like that at all. So you'll notice in our show... The bumpers are not gone through level later. So the, all the main talking segments go through level later, and then I assemble them all together. The bumpers get inserted afterwards and have not been leveled. So I never run the entire show through level later. It's always each segment individually. Uh, Little. That's really cool. I, I didn't know exactly what level later was doing. That There are tools like that in high end software. Yeah, I'm like sure I it's built into Sony. Sony. I'm sure Sony has it built right in. And, but, um, yeah. but it's really cool to hear that it's out there free for people. It's fantastic. Now, Audacity has a built in tool as well, but it's not as. Whatever the algorithm they use in Level Letter is, it's, it's fantastic. It's really, really mm. good. Uh, it, it's also good at not picking up background noise and thinking it's di- dialogue and raising it up, which some, sometimes the tools do. So I really, I've not seen a better algorithm than Level Letter. There may be one out there that's really expensive, but Level Letter is a good job. I'll have to check that out for my day job. Maybe it's better than Sony's tool. Then I try it out. It's free. Hey, you can't go wrong. Can't yeah. go wrong. Uh, it's easy to test. Uh, the only bummer about it is it only really works with WAV files. So you got to convert everything to WAV, then Level oh. Letter, and convert it back, which is yeah, a pain in the butt. Kind of lame. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt. So, but it's free. So, what are you going to do? Right. <laughs> um, one more thing I wanted to touch on before the guy at Dunkin' Donuts jumped over the counter and clubbed us to death for being in here and, and called that me. That guy and I'm, is I'm never shoving... going to make it over a counter. <laughs> I'm shoving Krispy Kremes in my mouth two at a time. He's, I know. Right. he's getting pretty <laughs> upset. He's not happy about that. <laughs> yeah, look, look, Colby, the, the, the hot. He smuggled his drink and his donuts <laughs> in look here. Look across the street, Colby, the, the hot donuts light is on. We should run over there and grab a couple more. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. So, um,. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing we should talk about. Everybody asks about this too. Where do you host your podcast? Why can't I just slap up episodes on my normal blog website? Why do I need a special podcast blogging host? Um, so, Colby, where do you guys host your your podcast? Well, originally we were just putting episodes up on the server and running our own RSS feed. Mm-hmm. Uh, How'd that work for you? It did not work. <laughs> uh, it, once we got even kind of semi popular, uh-huh. it turned uh-huh. into bandwidth issues. Yes, and so now we are on. Um, uh, shoot, <laughs> hold on a second. <laughs> uh, liberated syndication. Libsyn, the Libsyn. number one podcast host. Yeah, so here's the reason why you can't. Now, a lot of you out there may have your own blogs, maybe IT guys, and be like, "Why? Why can't I just slap my podcast up as downloads on my normal blog and make an RSS feed?" Well, you could. But most most podcasts or most blog hosts and most website hosts have bandwidth limits. And remember, as soon as you start slapping up there an hour or so of podcast audio a week or every other week, you're basically putting up there a 50 to 100 megabyte download every week for people to download. And if 10 people download that, you know, 100 megabytes, 10 people download, that's a gig, right? So all of a sudden, you are downloading your, your bandwidth for the month. If you have 10 listeners, it's a gig a month. That's not going to work um, for most, most hosts. So traditional uh, website hosting just is not configured right, not priced properly for podcast hosting. Also, file hosting usually on these sites, they, the bills go up for that as well. So if you're uploading a lot of files, your data storage is going to get huge too. So there are several different podcast hosting sites designed for hosting podcasts. Um, Libsyn is by far and away the premier, well-known, most used by everybody. I mean, major podcast hosts, um, well-known podcasts, everybody uses Libsyn. Um, there are other hosts, too, that work pretty much the same, um, but I, I don't think you go wrong with Libsyn. L-I-B-S-Y-N, or Liberated Syndication, as Colby says. Um, 
What's cool about them is a couple of I like long form because I'm fancy. Long, long, yes, fancy is important. So what I like about these guys is a couple things. First of all, bandwidth doesn't matter. So that's not part of the deal. So there's no concern about that. Second of all, they, they, all they do is hoax podcasts. They do it very, very well. They've been around a long time. So you won't have any problem with people suddenly if you get a thousand listeners or, or 10,000 listeners or 20,000 listeners, they have shows out there like uh, Adam Carolla and stuff, which are huge, 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 huge. listenerships that you, if you get that big, then more power to you, but don't worry. There's somebody bigger out there at Libsyn that's already using the system. So you're not going to be the giant guy in the corner. At the same time, their prices are very reasonable. They start about 15 bucks a month, and they move up, I think, we're at the 24 buck a month range. And the different price points are really based on how much data you're going to upload per month. This is what's also cool about them. So what they don't charge you for, you can only have, let's say, 500 megabytes of files on our site. And once you hit that, you're, you're done. What they say is you may upload X amount of megabytes per month new. Your old megabytes after a month's gone by, anything you uploaded more than months ago, stays online, can still be downloaded, but doesn't count against your total. So you can build a podcast library of, let's say, 100 episodes that are each <laughs> 200 megabytes each, which is what our show is, <laughs> and that's okay. You still pay your flat rate. It's really a matter of how many shows you're uploading a month. So if you're doing a bi-weekly podcast, you know, I just need to get that are 200 megabytes each. I need to have the plan that allows me to upload 400 megabytes a month. Um, if I'm doing a very much smaller show, a show that's maybe like a half hour show weekly, that's two hours a month. Maybe I only need, you know, the $10 a month plan. That would be fine too. And they, they gradually go up, so it's no big deal. So that's one of the reasons I like a dedicated podcast. Hopes. Podbean is another company that does similar plans. Um, there are others out there, but definitely you want to look, you can't just really take a regular blog host. I think the way their pricing works will not really pan out well for podcasting for you. Uh, and you need someone who's really, uh, used to the idea of lots and lots of users coming on and streaming from their site and downloading from their site. Um, a traditional blog host isn't really used to that. Uh-huh. Now, one of the downsides of Libsyn, and Kobe, you probably run into this, unfortunately, they, they have an okay blog system, but it's not advanced at all. So you probably don't host your main website through Libsyn, do you, Colby? No, it's on Plaid Hat, yeah. games.com, where we just have a podcast section and, right. so and you're, do the bloggy things there. Yeah, that makes total sense. So I think most people do the same thing. So most folks have their own dedicated blog or cool WordPress website or whatever that's all blinged out the way they like it, and they just then link to their Libsyn site that is basically their RSS feed, which is which is what, how the show gets this. Now, you should talk about RSS feed for a second, Colby. You want to describe how that works, or do you know how that all works? <laughs> An RSS feed is a is a whole uh, code page or whatever mm-hmm. where it, it's telling all these different uh, podcast catchers like that there's new content mm-hmm. and, and it works with blogs and whatever else and and so I was doing it all long form I was going in and a- actually entering in all the code for the new episode so that iTunes got all the information all the other catchers got all the information they needed when they referred to this uh, RSS code that I gave them and um and that was a dumb way to do it. And then <laughs> Libsyn is a much smarter way to do it because it's just like, well, I'll hit this and type this in and it guides you all the way through it. And, and then you put the, the info in and, and it does it all for you. Right. Like I had to enter in, this is how long the show is and this is how many bytes it is. And, right. and Libsyn takes care of all that. And, and that's one of the biggest challenges. So RSS, as you mentioned, is, is an XML feed, right? That's, that was designed a long time ago for transmitting information between it's just sort of pre-formatted information that websites used to use to communicate back and forth. Um, you know, you could put it in your Google Docs or your Google front page and see the latest stories in your favorite blog or whatever. It's everywhere now. Right. It's been used everywhere. And, and podcasting took it over to mean this is the feed. So you see a lot of people talk about it as your feed, what's your podcast feed. Um, and the feed is used to basically list your episodes. So it's how uh, iTunes and other podcast hosting companies get lists of what your episodes are, the description of your episodes, any you know, images you put with your episodes, the show notes, all that stuff gets transmitted in your RSS feed. Now, what's really makes doing it manually challenging, which Kobe ran into, is iTunes is very particular about what's in your RSS feed or they won't oh, list yeah. it. I had if you a problem with that. If you don't get it exactly right, iTunes is like, sorry, uh, I, want, I don't want to hear it. And if you get it wrong, it takes iTunes like two weeks to turn around and re- reevaluate you again. So basically, if you get your feed wrong over and over again, you could be waiting months before you get it all worked out with iTunes to get your thing f- finally running. What's cool about Libsyn is they do all that for you. If you post your shows in Libsyn, they already handle they handle the RSS feed formatting for you. They handle getting it right for iTunes for you. They even say, take this, they even have little instructions about how to take this link, 
put it in here on iTunes and iTunes will list you. And they, they kind of walk you through the whole process. So again, if you go through a professionally, uh, a company that knows podcasting, they'll, they'll walk you through the process and, and help you avoid some of those manual challenges that Colby went into. But I'm impressed, Colby. That's, that's a hard as hell thing to do manually. So that's really good. It was, it was something that, uh, somebody at the time, my web guy at the time set me up with. And yeah. so it was the only way I knew how to do it. And, and so it was doing it that way for a while until a friend turned me on to Libsyn. Yeah. Now, one other thing I would recommend about the feeds, um, there's a, there's a, tool out there called feed burner i don't know, colby do you guys use feed burner we don't i i'm vaguely familiar with that i, I tried to set it up in feed burner but yeah. it, so, i i either messed it up or something because so here's the deal with feed burner so feed burner used to be an independent company it was later bought by google so it's a google thing now type in feedburner.google.com what feed burner lets you do is take an rss feed and it could be a podcast feed and you go into feed burner and you you tell it what your feed is and then it'll basically make an alias for you. So I can make my, my Libsyn feed, which is libsyn.thed6generation.com, whatever it is, I can't remember what it is, slash RSS. I can put it in FeedBurner, and now my FeedBurner feed is you know, feedburner.google.com slash d6generation. Why the heck would I do that? Well, if I do that, and then later I decide to change my podcast host, let's say I decide to move off of Libsyn to, to someone else. If I move off of Libsyn to someone else and I'm using FeedBurner, all I could do is go to FeedBurner, change my source feed to a new, whoever the new host is. And if all my destinations like iTunes are looking at FeedBurner instead, it's an alias and I don't have to worry about if I move hosts, oh no, I got to update everybody with my feed. I got to tell all my listeners, hey, change your podcasting receiver, you know, your podcatchers all to this new feed or you won't get my latest show. If I've given all my listeners the feed burner feed because that's what I put on my website and I've given iTunes my feed burner feed and I later change my host from, my, from Libsyn to someone else, it's no big deal. It's transparent to all my users. So feed burner is a way to do that and feed burner also has some really cool sort of RSS formatting tools and other things to make it nice and pretty. Yeah, so I've had run into all those problems that FeedBurner would have solved, uh, <laughs> and uh, I had to do the whole thing where, hey, go get my new feed. <laughs> right. When I moved over to Libsyn from doing it myself on a server. Right. And, um, and, and but the problem with FeedBurner is you need to do it from the start. So if mm-hmm. you already got a podcast going, yeah, switch it's a problem. Into it. it will be yeah. it's it's <clears throat> just it's all the statistics and stuff that's going to roll out and all that is going to be based on the feed you set up there. Right. And so I I didn't realize that. I thought I could plug in my feed and then it was going to give me statistics on that feed. And it's just giving you statistics on the alias that it sets up for you. And so it turned into a whole thing over on the plaid hat podcast. (laughs) Uh, And uh, where, where I went and looked at it and it was like, we have one listener. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Because I didn't really track it before then right I, that's what i was trying to and so we named him doug and, <laughs> and nice. now we just refer to all of our listeners as doug the dougs i like it that's awesome <laughs> so well and that's and there actually are two problems with feed burner so i don't want to make it sound like it's the ultimate solution the first problem is as you said the stats seem weird to me on feed burner even though we've been using it since the beginning they're still way off and the libsyn stats are much more accurate so i do like how libsyn stats work and i, I like to track my stats there the second problem with FeedBurner, I just, we literally just discovered this at episode 100, Craig, which is really yeah. annoying. Um, it turns out that FeedBurner has a limit of 500 megabytes. Is it 500 megabytes or kilobytes? I think it might be 500 kilobytes. And there's, there's a limit to the size of your feed. Huh. So let's say you had a feed of like 100 episodes and each of those episodes had really long show notes, because we do. Um, it's potentially possible that your feed would get larger than the maximum size, which ours did at right around episode 100. Then what happens is FeedBurner says, I'm sorry, I can't take any more of your feed. So it stopped updating in episode 100. So when I pushed episode 101 live, it didn't show up on our feed. I was like, what happened? Well, it turned out that our feed was too big. So what I've had to do now is I've had to remove from our feed the older episodes. So I popped off episode like 1 and 1B and 2. Now, they're still available in our new app, and they're still available on our website, but they're not in the main feed, and therefore they're not on iTunes anymore, which is a little disheartening. So mm. that is a limit of feed burner. Eventually, you're going to, even if you have very lean show notes, someday you're going to get so many episodes that they won't all fit in the feed. So now that's not a limit of RSS, nor is it a limit of Libsyn. So now I'm considering, well, I really like Libsyn. I've been using them for three years now. Maybe I should just switch everything over and go through that whole fit painful process that I'd hoped FeedBurner would avoid switching over to Libsyn feed so that I can get rid of this limitation that we have. Um, so that's a little annoying. So, 
So go and open eyed. And I don't think that, to be honest, I don't think that limitation always existed in Feedburner. I think it's relatively new. I could be wrong about that, but I kind of feel like it's it's new. The um, Google overlords that it, forced it upon us. It may be the Google. Google's been getting a little greedy lately, and yeah? like there's charging for their maps now and stuff. I don't know. Anyway, so so yeah, so that sort of happens. So I just want to make people aware of it. But as you're starting out, it's a great way, especially if you're if you don't want to go Libsyn and try a different podcast host. You might bounce around a little bit. Get an alias service like FeedBurner to to hide that, so you don't have to deal with the whole "What do I do when I change my change my feed?" Because that definitely changing feeds is definitely brutal. Mm. Um, and it's very, it's very scary to do it on iTunes because there's a chance you could lose the relationship between all the information on iTunes and your current show, which would stink if you had a lot of reviews on iTunes that were positive, like we do, because now you could lose all that information associated with your show and start all over again, which would stink. So that whole process is very, very tricky to do. So anywho, one review on iTunes and it just says, boo. <laughs> So we well, were glad fine. to ditch the old feed. That's right. Screw them. <laughs> right. right. Well, uh, any other... true, by the way. Coming <laughs> from the Plat Hat Podcast. <laughs> the Plat Hat Podcast is excellent. I've listened to you guys several times. It's, it's a great show. So, Colby, thanks for joining us here on the on the, on the the Lost Chapter. Any other comments about building your own podcast you want to leave our visitors, our listeners with? Um. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, got no, nothing. darn it. I got nothing. Just, Craig, how about you? Uh, I just think uh, you, you you need to like what you're doing. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty much it. And and uh, I mean, all the technical stuff you can learn, but if you don't like what you're doing, then it's going to come across, and uh, nobody's going to want to listen. Nobody wants to listen. To, a, a nobody wants to get lectured at for any length of time, and B nobody wants to listen to you talk about something that you're kind of eh, sort of interested in a little bit, I guess. Right, but right? all that other stuff. Well, all, all the like, do I have a good voice? Uh, right. Yeah. Do, am I articulate? Uh, do I have something interesting to say? All that other stuff is not as important as am I enjoying myself because exactly. in the end, it's a hobby. Yep. Exactly. That's yeah. Totally right. that, if you're not interested in enjoying yourself, then there's no point in doing this because that's where the payoff comes in. Right. That's that's all I got. Agreed. Be happy. Be true to yourself and be true to your donuts. Don't you like- worry. <laughs> be podcast happy. Don't worry, podcast happy now. You, no, no, nobody. You're just and, gonna leave me hanging. I, I, okay, fine, I'm just whatever. worried. The guy's looking at us. He doesn't like those Krispy Kremes. He's no, ripped, yeah. So. Well, no kidding. I mean, this is the first time we're actually getting kicked out. So be, that's cool. Be true <laughs> nice to yourself. Colby. Be true to yourself. Enjoy those Krispy Kremes. <laughs> yeah. Be true to yourself. Don't eat donuts you don't want to eat. <laughs> right. Even if it means bringing outside donuts into the shop. Bell against the man. Right. That's right. Colby, thanks for joining us again. We really appreciate yeah, you coming thanks, on the Lost Colby. Show. Thanks, guys. Thanks for purchasing a D6G Lost Chapter. Supporting the show helps it grow. Craig, why don't you give me some noise there, man? Uh, noise. Bring in the noise. Bring in the funk. But a bunch. But a bunch. That's about all, all I got. Colby, you got anything? Check one, two, two, <laughs> check. Nice. Look at that detailed. <laughs> you, know, you know what he's doing? He's saving up his creativity for the recording. I like it. It's going to be. He's going to be full of action, vim, and vigor. <laughs>